Hi, good morning. My name is Eleftheria, but I know it can be a little bit difficult to be pronunciated, so you can call me Ellie. And I'm a front-end developer. And today I'm going to tell you my story of what I gained after 100 days of code. So, uh, does anyone know the challenge, 100 days of code? All right, great. Um, almost two years ago, I was doing my internship in Amsterdam. And I knew that after my internship, I should go back to my country, which is Greece, and find my first developer job. But I didn't have a lot of skills, and my portfolio wasn't that good. So I thought that I should do something to develop myself and develop my skills. Every morning, I read um, in the Medium platform a lot of articles. I like doing that. And one day, I read an article called 100 Days of Code the Challenge. And it was written by the creator of a challenge called 100 Days of Code, and he was explaining the rules and the benefits of taking part in it. Uh, the rules, no, oh. like the rules were to code for at least one hour every day and should be outside from your nine to five developer job, and then post the code on GitHub, upload it there, and share it on uh, Twitter, and also follow people there, uh, give them feedback and be happy with what you're doing. So my next step was challenge accepted. Let's do this. And I started coding every day for at least one hour. I was trying to find things that I like. Maybe it was something from my work that I wanted to get better, or something completely different, like a new skill, a new language. And then I would upload the code on GitHub every time, every day and share it on uh, Twitter, and also try to give my feedback there. The first couple of days, I was quite shy using Twitter, and I didn't really know how to do that. So I was just like, like, like every post. But then as I was uh, started connecting with people and started leaving comments, and people gave me feedback, and I thought that I'm doing something nice, and I'm getting better, and I should continue doing that. So this gave me motive. A lot of people, uh, either on emails or friends that I was telling them about that I'm doing this challenge, were asking me, how do you find where to code? Or I want to start also coding, but I don't know how can I do that. Uh, for me, there are, there are a lot of great sources, and they're usually free, which is nice. And you can learn a lot of stuff there. Uh, there are online educational platforms like FreeCodeCamp that I used a lot and uh, Udemy, Udacity, Coursera, FutureLearn, and a lot, a lot more. Of course, there is YouTube that you can find courses for all levels, and this is always free. And um, online communities, and here I'm referring to Stack Overflow, like we wouldn't be there if it wasn't the Stack Overflow. And there are other coding challenges. I did the 100 days of code, but then of course there are uh, 30 days, 30 sites, our uh, daily CSS images, and all these challenges gives you an email. And in this email you can find a link or a YouTube video or something, and you can follow it and also get better. Uh, you can read books and magazines, like uh, one of my favor favorite books, if you are the JavaScript developer, is the Alokian JavaScript. I think it's also well known. And as for inspiration, uh, you can read blogs, browse forums, follow your favorite publications on Medium or on Twitter, and read, read, read. Of course, go to meetups and attend in conferences. Right. This is a full mix of everything. And so now, what did I learn and what did I want to learn? Uh, the first thing and the most basic thing, if you want to be a front-end developer, which was my goal, is to know the basics like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But it's not only this, then you have to develop, so it's like HTML5, CSS3, 5, Bootstrap, Flexbox, and all these kind of beautiful things. And uh, then as it started using the, the JavaScript console more, I mean, I wanted to do that for a long time, but I didn't know how to do it, and I saw other developers that were doing it, but I was like, okay, I see all these little pretty tabs there, but I don't know what exactly they are doing, but it's okay, we can do it. And then the last thing that I wanted to learn was uh, maybe AngularJS or another framework, I wasn't sure about it, but 
I learned AngularJS and the Data Visualization Library, and I learned the D3GS. Now, what did I build? One of the first things that I built was, I have a short animation here. All these images that you can see are made with only CSS or SCSS and some HTML. Some of them are very, very simple and it can be done in less than an hour, but some of them are more complicated. So this was my first step, learn very good HTML and CSS. And I built 50 of these images. The next thing was JavaScript, and I started building some parts of websites and using my first API calls. Some of them were very simple and not very good, not very stylish, but I tried. Then I started getting into more like games and quizzes. My first quizzes were also very, very simple, only questions and then some answers and the scores. But um, as I was doing the Freecode camp, uh, there were some challenges there, and one of them was the Simon game and the Tic-Tac-Toe game. And I started learning more and more how to code better in JavaScript and build these games. Then my next goal was to learn AngularJS, and once again I started building some small parts of websites. And they were very simple, but for me it was a big step, because it was the first time that I was building something and people liked it, I saw it in Twitter, right? And then uh, I thought that I wanted to do also something extra, and that was learning uh, data visualization, and I chose the library D3GS, and this is an example of it. And last but not least, I built this almost two months ago, and it's a screenshot for a game. The game is called Game of Life. And uh, this game took me one or two days only to understand the rules of how to play it. So it was uh, a big procedure for me to learn firstly how to play it and then how to code it. But in the end, I learned a lot of things and I think it's pretty cool. Does anyone know the game, uh, Game of Life? It's very complicated, <laughs> very complicated. Okay, so... Um, I didn't build all these things in 100 days of code, like as the challenge said. I continue building things after this time. So a lot of people ask me uh, what is my motivation and what inspires me. And for me, it's always um, an urge to get better and follow my dreams. And my dreams is getting better and have a good job and also help others. So there is this quote from Tim Ferriss. Maybe some of you can find it a little bit arrogant, but it says, you are the average of the five people you're most associated with. And I totally believe this. Like, here today, everyone is here because I guess he wants or she wants to get better and learn something more and learn something cool. And how can we do that? We can socialize and connect with others. So I think these quotes really represent what we are doing now and maybe our dreams and our goals. And another quote. Um, I would also like to encourage you to take part in this challenge or learn something more or develop a skill. But it's like I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, but I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. Because after completing uh, this challenge and after learning all these skills, I also get socialized a lot more. I get followers on Twitter. I found a nice job. And it wasn't very difficult to find a job, although it, I, when I started, I was very afraid that I wouldn't be able to do anything. Um, so. So here I'm going to present some tips and tricks that I believe will help you also to do something great. And the first of them is setting your goals and priorities, right? We can do anything if we don't have a specific clear goal in our mind. So set your goal and priorities and be straight with them. Another important thing that I've also uh, talked about is finding your motivation. The motivation can be different for everyone. Maybe for some of them is just to learn a skill, to impress their boss, or uh, take a promotion, or somebody else wants to do a freelancing job to help their family financially and also want to do to have a new skill. Um, but motivation, as this image shows there, can only get you so far when you want to be 
at the top. So it's like when you begin to do something, you are, yes, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to kill that, and everything will be better. But after time passes, like your energy goes down, down, down. So what you have to do is be determined. You have to be determined, and you have to say, yes, I'm going to do it, I'm going to build it, I'm going to, to make a new skill or something. Yes, and I, I really like this image here, and I'm going to read it. It says, like, how do you program so well? Practice. It must be an intended gift, a gift from God. It's practice. I'll never understand how people are so talented, a mystery, and it's practice. So, yes, it's practice. We are not gifted, or at least I'm not gifted, but I have practiced a lot. And then there is another problem, and I think that pretty much most of us have it, and it's time management. Um, we don't have the time to build something, to learn something, or do something cool that we like. And for me, what helped me is, first thing, put your phone away, set it to silence, set it to airplane mode, just don't be in the same room with it, all right? Then if you think like one hour is a lot, you can use the Pomodoro clock, the Pomodoro technique, sorry, which basically says that um, set a timer for 20 to 25 minutes, then take a break for five minutes and continue this for three times, and then voila, you have your one hour. So, the last thing is uh, keep a to-do list or a calendar. I've read of this thing like a lot of times, but I I didn't use to do that. In the end, I started doing, uh, starting keeping a calendar or to-do list. It doesn't have to be something complicated. For me, the simple, the better. Just write something down and try to stick to it. And in the end of the day, you can review it and see all the great things that you have accomplished. Uh, so by doing this challenge, I gained a lot of things. Like I learned to be more optimistic and grateful and connect with people. I also did a lot of other challenges, like I mentioned, 30 days, 30 sides. And um, I learned to believe in myself. I learned no doubt myself so much. And of course, I met a lot of people with different backgrounds and different aspirations. Most of them, I met them uh, via Twitter or me emails or maybe Skype. But it was great hearing their stories and what they also want to accomplish. Now, would I recommend signing up for a challenge like this? And the answer, of course, for me is yes. If you want to get better, improve, and learn something, do something for yourself, then yes, you should totally do this. Uh, some, again, small tricks and tips, like track your progress, set daily or weekly goals, don't get easily disappointed, always encourage others and be kind to others, and stick your, to your goals. So, thank you very much. <laughs> that was my uh, presentation. <laughs>